you are the person you're waiting for. That is the thing. You are that person you're waiting for. Nobody is coming to save you. Nobody is coming to hold your hand and take you to the gym, hold your hand and take you traveling again, hold your hand and take you to work. Like you need to hold your own hand and you need to be there for yourself. And maybe this separation is an opportunity for you to take that power back and say, okay, now it is me, myself and I, and this is not selfish. There whether you ended the relationship, whether the relationship has ended, how do you recover from that? In a traumatic experience, in a traumatic relationship, your nervous system is in survival mode. Meaning that when you're in survival mode, you get anxious, you're hypersensitive, hyper aware, you are constantly looking for a danger or a problem or something to solve. You're in fight or flight mode and that is a sign that you're not in a healthy relationship. So when you're moving on from an unhealthy relationship and you are getting back to your power, you are still in that fight or flight mode. And we get sometimes addicted to that fight or flight when we've been through ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs, and, so, and now it's flat. You're like, oh my God, what's going on? Now all of a sudden I have all this time for me. Now all of a sudden I am at peace and it's calm. And like calm can feel weird when we're super addicted to the up and the down and the fight and the flight and all that stuff. So you need to restore your sense of safety to turn off that survival mode. That means that you have to do things that really impact your well-being. You need to take care of yourself now. You need to focus on you. You need to make things that make you happy. For so long, your sense of identity has been attached to that person. So naturally, when you detach, you don't know who you are anymore. You're a bit lost and you miss them because they're a part of you. And what needs to happen is that you need to recover that sense of wholeness and completedness because you came to this world on your own. You're going to leave this world on your own too. Nobody is there to be the half of you that doesn't exist. You're whole by yourself and they're whole by themselves. Like a completedness, a being who is complete, right? To recover your sense of identity, you need to make sure that you know what is it that you like and what are your values. So take a pen and paper and write down what is important for me in my life in order of priority. Is it your family that is most important? Is it your work? Is it your hobby? Is it traveling? What is important for you in your life? What brings you the most joy? What brings you the most fulfillment? What makes you happy? Please make a list of that. And you're going to focus on that to feel that void and that time and that energy that is missing from that person. Your sense of identity matters. Your needs matter. You need to start meeting your own needs. I always tell my clients to treat themselves as if they were caring for a baby in the sense of like they need to make sure that they eat three meals a day, healthy meals, that they sleep for at least eight hours, that they go to the bathroom, that they play, they have play time in their day or in their week, that they schedule time for themselves, that they read books, like all of these things are important. All, the, all of these things keep you sane. So now that this person is gone from your life, now that you have more time on your hands, it is a wonderful opportunity to make sure that you meet your own needs. Okay, you're not going to stay there and wait for someone to appear in your life to fill that void that is just empty now. You are the person you're waiting for. 
that is the thing you are that person you're waiting for nobody is coming to save you nobody is coming to hold your hand and take you to the gym hold your hand and take you traveling again hold your hand and take you to work like you need to hold your own hand and you need to be there for yourself and maybe this separation is an opportunity for you to take that power back and say okay now it is me myself and i and this is not selfish there's a difference between being selfish and just taking care of yourself because you are responsible for your well-being only you're not responsible for any other people's emotions or well-being or anything else like you're the one who is responsible for you and so you need to put yourself first and putting yourself first is not selfish at all it's actually in service to you and in service to others because there is no codependency you won't depend on anyone to meet your needs everybody else in your life is gonna be the cherry on top of your cake but you're the cake you're the one you've been looking for this whole time so that's what needs to be integrated in your head is like you are the person who is going to come and save you so stop waiting for this person to come back and just come out and save yourself do things for you Something else that you need to move on and to help you stay consistent with your new identity, with who you are now, with your new goals, with your new life is a support system. Women rise with a support system. Men do too. Men need their men's support system. We women need our women's support system. Why do I say that? It's not that men and women can't support each other because we can and we must. However, nobody is going to understand you more than another woman if you're a woman. For example, imagine you're pregnant and you're going to give birth. Nobody in the world is going to understand you and to have more compassion for you and to know how to help you and to have the tools more than another woman who has gone through that same situation so if you're a woman watching this you need a women's support group you need that you need a group of girls of women who are there for you that can be your girlfriends that can also be an online group i do hold a women's support group online if you're interested it's free and i give advice on there i give journaling prompts every month we do rituals we do meditations we do activations we are in this together we share challenges we share celebrations victories wins like all that stuff is very important for you to keep going in where you want to go with like-minded women who are in this same path right because what we don't realize is that we're not alone you are not alone okay so many other people in this world are going through the same shit that you are going through or very similar so let me tell you when you are in a space where you are safe to tell your story when you are safe to express yourself and to be yourself you're not going to go back anywhere because this is where you belong right and so having the support of other women that are in the same path as you is going to be crucial in staying consistent and just rising above the situation that you're finding yourself in because let me tell you everything is temporary the suffering that you endure right now the situation you're in right now in 10 years is this gonna matter in 10 years in five years are you going to look back and say well yeah i did that i survived that like you have the courage to be here and to thrive and to figure it out for yourself and so this is just the opportunity for you to strengthen your identity and to bring yourself back and to allow yourself to be supported by other women who are just like you in terms of support you can also go to therapy you can hire a coach the point is having someone else who is trustworthy and who can hold you accountable for your new goals and your new um, identity or it's not even a new identity it's just like getting back to yourself getting back to what you like 
right because otherwise if you don't have that support you're gonna go right back to where you were before because you know what our brains are wired for safety and for familiarity and so if that situation that you just went through even if it's not healthy for you if it feels familiar to you if it feels safe you're gonna go back to that okay so there is this discomfort of like getting back your energy and your sense of safety after a traumatic event or after a traumatic relationship that must be achieved when you do have support from a therapist from a coach from people who know how to listen and who do not judge and who are there to hold a safe space for you in order to express yourself and to bring yourself back to life essentially Saturate yourself with positive things in the sense that you can't be ruminating forever. You need to move on and that requires you to have new ideas and new inspiration in your life. And so find podcasts to listen to, find YouTube videos, find books that you can read who really inspire you and that really are there to expand your awareness and your consciousness on something else so that you have new ideas new inspirations you can move on however it's not gonna work to shower yourself with positive affirmations and things if you haven't processed the trauma so that's what i'm saying first you need support to unravel to unpack that trauma because if you do not unpack the trauma if you do not see it and process it it's you're gonna carry it with you like a backpack through your life and you're gonna bring it with you to your new relationships and i don't think you want that so now that you're by yourself you do have the opportunity to unpack the trauma to really see it for what it was to have support this can take weeks it can take months but ultimately you will be in a much better situation in six months from now if you got the support and if you also saturated yourself with new things new ideas new books to read new music new people that's just going to allow you to find your sense of safety again and just process that trauma so that you don't bring it with you everywhere that's not good for you that's not for your highest good those emotions are meant to be felt and you are also meant to find that support from other people you're not meant to do this alone and you're not meant to go through all those emotions on your own because we're humans and we're here for each other and you have so much support available to you from your family from your friends online you get it I am well aware that doing self-care and positive things is not going to feel that the void that you have from that relationship and from these emotions. That's why I'm telling you, it's just not enough to put that self-care on and say, oh, I've, I've moved on. No, you move on when your feelings have also moved on if your feelings are still stuck in there honey you haven't moved on as much as you try so the support part of this is the most important because without that without meeting those parts of yourself that desperately need that support without doing that you're not gonna be able to move on anywhere part of you is gonna be stuck in that situation so make sure that you do get that type of support while you're doing other things to bring yourself back you're not going to go well if you do not address the underlying issues that are present from this past relationship or this situation because the truth is that relationships in our lives are reflections of the relationships that we had with our parents 
and with our family. And so if you do have trauma from your family, if you have suffered abuse, or if somebody abandoned you, or if you had some sort of traumatic event happening, or maybe you don't even recall and you're like, my life was pretty normal, I don't understand. Listen, there's always things that happened that you're not even aware of because you were a child and this is imprinted in your subconscious. And so where I'm going with this is that you need to address those underlying issues and patterns so that you can release them. Because probably that relationship that you just moved on from is part of that cycle, is part of those patterns that are just not serving you and unhealthy for you. And so you need to be looking at that very closely. You need to do some inner work on releasing that. I have some journals, some guided journals that I have created on these topics of just releasing old emotional baggage from old relationships so that you can focus on the present and on building better relationships for your future. So that's the most important work. You can't move on just with self-care. You know, yes, you need to meet your basic needs of food and shelter and sleep and doing something something fulfilling for yourself and making money and all that stuff. Basic survival. And I think you get that. But no amount of pedicures, of massage, of trips, of drinking with your friends, of doing things to escape is going to make you move on and forget about just what happened. You need to be able to figure it out and to take out the lessons from it so you can actually move on and have new relationships for your future. It is very important to do the inner work. It is the most important part of everything that I'm going to say in this video and about relationships. You need to address the underlying issues that are present in order to get yourself back and build new relationships that actually are for your highest good.